welcome to the Auction Addict Triathlon Podcast. We're brought to you every week by our sponsors, PrecisionHydration.com, who offer electrolyte drinks in different strengths to match how you sweat. You can personalize your hydration strategy today at PrecisionHydration.com and get a free box or tube of Precision Hydration worth up to $9.99 using the code OxygenAddict. And we're also brought to you by our patrons who very kindly support the show with a monthly or an annual donation. And patrons can get our 2018 patrons-only podcast as a thank you. Um, right, so slightly different format this week. I'm pre-recording the show, and this week I've got a fantastic interview lined up for you to kind of fill in the gaps while we don't have a traditional show this week. I have got an interview with you with Matt Bottrell. So you'll have heard of Matt on the show before. We've had him on. Um, Matt is fast becoming the go-to coach for pro triathletes who really want to optimize their performance on the bike. He's worked with athletes like Tim Don, Lucy Charles, Will Clark, and also Ironman world record holder Matt Hansen. As an athlete, Matt Bottrell held over 20 national championship wins in cycling and time trialing. And I think his knowledge of how to break down, how to go fast is pretty much second to none. So in this interview, we're going to find out some of the secrets he's got to going fast on a bike. And um, one of the things I think you might find surprising is he doesn't think it's all about training at all. So there's some really good news here that if you're already in great shape, there's some other stuff you can do that can help you get faster. And if you think back to last week's episode where we had Susie Richards talking about the change in her position that gained her over three minutes, over a 25 minute time trial for the same power output. Um, it's all it's all starting to point in the same direction that there is free speed out there. Um, so Matt teaches us a bit about his bike fit secrets and body position recommendations, uh, a bit about his coaching philosophy, and he tells us all about how he helps people find available free speed. One of the key things that came out of this was that he had to find 65 watts in order to win the national 10 mile uh, time trial championships. And uh, and he said it wasn't through training that he found that watts, it was through optimizing his position and his aerodynamics and his kit. Um, Love this interview. Matt's become quite a good friend of mine over the years through doing these interviews and various other conversations we've had. We we really hit it off and he's a he's a funny and kind and really humble coach. And one of the things I really love about him is he's a real student of triathlon. He he's super knowledgeable about time trialing and cycling, but he really wants to know more about how to break things down into the component parts and especially in triathlon, how he can get his athletes to go as fast as possible. So we're gonna tap into all of that knowledge now. So sit back and enjoy this interview with Matt Bottrell. All right. So Matt Bottrell, welcome back onto the show. It's lovely to have you back on and to have a chat. And uh, we've just been having a laugh. I've said I better hit record because otherwise we'll talk for an hour before we actually record anything. So it's nice to catch up with you, man. How are things going? Oh, man. Yeah, no, it's always good to chat, Rob. Like I say, yeah, it's always good to uh, go over a few things. And But yeah, Everything's pretty bonkers as always, you know, there's never enough hours in the day, but I kind of like it that way. Well, it certainly looks from the outside as though things are going from strength to strength with uh, your company, Matt Botterill Performance Coaching. Um, several significant pros under your wing at the moment, including Ironman Texas winner, Matt Hansen, who we had on a couple of weeks ago. He was raving about you. Obviously, Lucy Charles was second in Kona. She was raving about you. We had Tim Don. Who, who knows, he could have been on top of the podium in Kona had he uh, not had his tragic accident. He was raving about you. So the coaching's clearly going on, uh, in a great direction, man. And you're doing a really good job with loads of pros around the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's just going from strength to strength. You know, it's just, you know, it's been a process of uh, just learning all the time and just just trying to understand the sport more and more. You know, there's so much to learn and try. That's what just makes it so interesting. You know, I love the process. It's just, it's just so many things to think about. It's not just like me just saying, oh, I can, you know, I can realistically, I can make anybody go fast on the bike. But the hardest bit when you're doing free disciplines and you chuck some strength and conditioning and recovery, it's trying to get that synergy of it all. And the more that I do this, the more that I learn, you know. So, yeah, it's uh, amazing, really. <laughs> <laughs> So listen, for those people who, who haven't heard the previous interview that we've done with you and who might not have heard of you before, obviously in the days before you were a, 
a big name coach. You were also a big name, or you still are a big name rider. Let's be honest, man. There's still some serious damage you can do to any time trial or road race field, mate. So give us a little rundown of your of your history in time trialing and, and road racing and then in how you moved into triathlon. Uh, it was kind of, yeah. So I've obviously been riding a bike from a, the tender age of 12, kind of a kid that had too much energy and discovered cycling. And yeah, I became reasonably good at it. So it kind of reasonably uh, good. <laughs> yeah. It kind of how, many times, how many times national champion were you at time trial, Matt? Uh, I think it's like 20 odd times individually. <laughs> so yeah. I, <laughs> so yeah, I did. I just had this desire to be, try and be the best at something. And it kind of recycling with this thing that I found and yeah, it made me into somebody and uh, it, you know, it, it took me quite a while to get to the point of achieving like obviously national competition records but in that yeah the, the process of that you know i kind of I, I learned a lot and yeah it's just but ultimately i've just had this desire to get faster and faster you know and i, I, I think i've still got that desire now you know uh and for me it was just like i went through this process of you know winning road races then uh we had children and you know, well, like with the road race, you know, I was like riding for GB, and uh, but I kind of knew that I was never going to be like this uber professional. But I kind of still wanted to be the best at something. We had children, and it was like, wow, I haven't got enough. You know, I can't apply myself to hours and hours of training. So I was like, right, I want to be the best at time trialing. You know, I was already a good time trialist. You know, I've won like junior national ten, and. Uh, I was just like, right, how, how do I become the best? And, you know, I went through this process of, uh, you know, like learning to ride with a power meter, understanding like aerodynamics. You know, I met some great people in that time. Uh, you know, like people like Simon Smart that runs like Drag 2-0 and uh, a guy called Bob Tobin from Cycle Power Meters. And it was those guys that, you know, they made me into the rider that I was. And, that, you know, in that time, I just learned so much till I got to the point that, uh, yeah, I won, like, every national championship and, you know, set the, the fastest rides at the time for, for 25 and 50 miles. And it took me so long to get there that, you know, it took me 18 years to win, like, these national titles that I ultimately wanted to achieve that I kind of got to that point and it was like, that's it, I've done it. Where, where, where do I go from here? <laughs> and, yeah, that's so that brought me into the, the you know, the transition of uh, triathlon. I was just like, uh, yeah, what can I do? Uh, I've kind of seen this, there's, you know, having done some coaching with triathletes, you know, obviously I have, like, people like Tim O'Brack to win Roth. And at the time when I coached him, I didn't really understand what triathlon was, but... I understood the demands and I was like, wow, there's something really missing here. And I could, you know, then I started coaching like people like Brian Fogarty and Mark Frelfall. And I was like, wow, these guys are like uber strong, but there's just so much more that they, they can achieve. So I was like, right, to understand this sport, I'm going to chuck myself in it. And obviously that's when I met you. Uh, and yeah, it's just been a, a learning process, but Ultimately, I just found this love for, yeah, for triathlon as a sport, but just like the people in it. This, it's, it, yeah, the more people I meet, the more, yeah, I, I enjoy it. And, you know, I've just got, you know, I've got so much respect for people that, that put themselves through this. From, obviously, I'm known for what we do with a lot of these professionals, but from age groupers to pros, it's just like everybody just got this. Yeah, just amazing love for it, and it's good to see. You know, it's good to be part of it. Yeah, hey, well, one of the things I I loved about you right from the first moment we met was that it seems to me that you've, like all good coaches, you've got this love of working things out. There's like the mystery of how do I. I think you and me are quite similar in this respect. It's like, how do I work out the pieces of this? It seems really complex. Yeah. Let's break it down. Let's find out the best people that you can talk to. And it sounds like you've you've just absorbed knowledge like a sponge from all the different coaches that you've worked with along the way to put the different pieces together. And now you've got to the point where it all kind of makes sense for you and you can go and help people 
transfer the knowledge that you learned in cycling and transfer that into a triathlon setting almost in a way that works for them yeah definitely it's just like you've got like this massive jigsaw puzzle puzzle and ultimately i was like when i first started doing tri i was like wow there's like these three disciplines to train for and i never thought there was any crossover but then the more once i started you know it's like intervals and how you know how you train in you know it all fell into to, to place but there's like this neglect with cycling i always thought that i you know, I couldn't understand, but then I kind of, you know, work with different people, you know, like yourself, and I met different coaches, and obviously I've got, like, all these people I've met through cycling, and I was like, well, do you know what? Nobody's actually got all the answers, but if you can, you know, if I, like, I, I, I'm kind of this, this this middle source, but if I can go out there and find all these pieces of the, you know, the jigsaw, work with different people, then ultimately... I'm going to make uh, these athletes into, uh, yeah, the, the, the best that they can possibly be. Because I'm telling you now, anyone that, te- any coach or any specialist that tells you that they've got all the answers, they haven't. Because <laughs> it's so true. You know, it is. But some people do think that they have. But I think that, that that's quite arrogant in a way because nobody has. You've got to, it's just a learning process all, all the time. And, what one individual needs is just so different to the next one. Uh, and I think the biggest factor is that we all neglect is kind of this, the mind is, is probably the strongest tool that you've got. And ultimately, you've got to make that happy. And you, It's not always going to be happy. You've got to make it suffer. <laughs> but you've just, got to find, you've just got to find out. For me, it's always trying to understand what makes that person tick. And that's what I love about the coaching you know like setting the plan to me that's the easy part yeah you know, I can I can look at the power profile I can understand like the demands of the, their events but uh, I very much like getting into people's heads and trying to make them find out that what that makes them tick I'm sure I must get on the nerves sometimes because I'm quite random <laughs> <laughs> so it's like some old I'm not very good at, uh, store, you know, it's like information. If I've got something to say, I have to say it. Uh, I'm very much like a visual learner. So uh, it's like, I don't know, I'll just send them out a random message. I said, you haven't got to reply to this now, but could you just answer me this now? And for me, it's just building this p- picture so I can understand how I'm going to get them from, you know, realistically, I'm going to get them from A to B in the fastest time possible. And that's what my process is. It's so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's so true, Matt. It's, it, it's all about working with the mind of the athlete. That's what coaching is. The, the training plan and the, the power sections and the intervals and stuff. People can find that in a book. And I think there's, we probably all agree, there's not really any secret source there in the training plans. The thing that makes the coaching great or the, is the relationship between the coach and the athlete. And it's, it certainly looks from the results that your athletes have been having this year and from the ones we've talked to on the show. Like I said, we had Matt Hansen on, we had, uh, we had Lucy on, we've had uh, Tim on. They've all sort of said separately, yeah, we've worked on aerodynamics and position, blah, 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 but I've got this belief now. Yeah. And it seems that that's something that you must be really good at getting across to your athletes is they, they work yeah. with you and gain this belief that you're telling them they can do X, Y, and Z and, and it becomes that for them. Yeah, definitely, and that's it's always giving them, yeah, giving them that belief because at the end of the day, I failed so much in my career. Yes, there was a lot of success in the end of it, and you know, and parts through it. But I went to some real dark places at the time. You know, I, I've, I've made probably more mistakes than anybody, but that's what I'm able to say to these, you know, these athletes that I work with. That okay, this is this is the process that you've got to go through, and these are the reasons why. Because there's no doubt about it, like the sessions, you know, some of the training I give them is hell. But I, you know, but I give them a reason for it. But ultimately, I'm saying that, you know, if you do this session for me and we we, we work on this, then you're going to go, I'm pretty sure that analysing all the data, you're going to hit this power, you're going to hit this speed. This is going to translate into you being able to, run X, Y, and Z off, off the bike. And that's ultimately, I just look at them all individually and just say, well, 
this is your race strategy and this is these, these are the reasons that, that we're working around this but a lot of the time is it, it is like you're a bit of a i'm like a counselor to them but uh they are to me as well you know i really feed off them and i just want to give them a it, it, it's just like i just don't want them to have to worry about anything because it's like when they're on that start line you know we all look at the pros and I'm sure that we all think that their lives are easy, but they've all got the same stresses. You know, it's like getting to the swimming pool, trying to get that next session in, trying to eat, trying to, you know, all these outsized uh, things that can uh, just impact their, you know, when they're on that start line, it can really impact them. Dealing with sponsors, that's a massive stress. So I just like to, I try and get involved with it all. It's not because I'm nosy, it's just that I know, say, if they haven't got, uh, you know, something that they need for their bike, for example, that it's going to stress them out because I, I've been there. Yeah. And I know that then, you know, it's not like that, that, that day, but they're always thinking, it's always at the back of their mind, like, uh, and that's what I just want to, when they're on that start line, I just want them to feel invincible and they know that they've got the best support that, that's out there. And ultimately, they're not just winning to, you know, gain that victory. They want, they're doing it for me as well. And I think that that's, yeah, that's kind of what's working at the minute. And, yeah, that's how I just want it to carry on, you know. But, yeah, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> now, a lot of the things that you do with your athletes, uh, certainly – from an outside point of view it's noticeable to me that when you start working with an athlete their bike position changes i could give you an example of lucy charles yeah. her bike position has changed radically since she started working with her almost to the point where it kind of makes me laugh and i think all mats all mats athletes are interchangeable if you put them in the same kit they'd look like the same rider on the bike because that yeah. position is <laughs> is so aerodynamic and yeah. and so one of the thing i wanted to ask is imagining myself in the mindset of our listeners who are sitting at home thinking well matt's just said i can make people fast i can put them in a fast position and i can you know there's all these all this low hanging fruit in terms of aerodynamics what can we learn what can we give people away to the podcast to sort of say right as a triathlete we're, we're all making these mistakes that time trialists wouldn't make. What are some of the easy wins for triathletes to deal with? Like the biggest thing that a lot of athletes, you know, we all like triathletes in general, they all think about training and they don't understand. You know, that was the thing that I came into this and I was like, everybody understands like, uh, you know, it's like swimming and aerodynamics in the, in the pool. They understand that, you know, uh, this this technique with cycling is the same kind of uh, it's the same principle. The the body is eighty percent of your for your of your drag. So for most athletes that are doing try, they they focus on how they're going to race and they're the, the training, but ultimately they're not thinking about this body position. But that's the most critical part of going fast. So obviously like tri bars most people are riding those uh but like clothing is is a, is a massive element head position again is is something that we all need to be thinking about that that's what's going to make you make you aerodynamically faster but from a you know it's like from a, a point of view when we assess somebody why do we we have to understand what their body can do you know there's loads of people doing bike fitting and uh, there's loads of people got, yeah, you know, and the, you know, in the bike fitting, everyone looks at you as a triathlete. Well, yes, you have got the swim, so that's going to the build up fatigue in the in the uh, in the arms and in, in the lower back and in the shoulders, and also also you've got to run off the bike. But you've just got to account for all these elements, and but. Ultimately, it's understanding what that body shape can do and trying to reduce that, that body shape drag. So starting with a bike fit is like the key part for the, every triathlete. You know, you've you brought this nice bike, then, you know, the process then is getting it dialed because uh, that's going to save you so much time. You know, it's, there's a reason that our pro triathletes, uh, uh, you know, these are world-class athletes and they're going faster. And they've done a lot of this aero stuff, but you know, for them, 
yeah, they, they, they've reached this point, but for most age groups, they, they'll even find more because their speeds are lower and also that they've not optimized anything. So starting with the bike fit, looking at clothing, looking at helmets, you know, everyone will tell you there's the fastest helmet in the world. That's that's a lie. You know, it's understanding the, 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 your body shape and how you hold that head. You know, if you're bobbing your head all about, then, you know, a massive tailed helmet isn't going to work for you. Uh, in terms of I know you've spent loads of time in the wind tunnel but like in terms of something I've always wondered say I've got a great big long tailed aero helmet and my head yeah. bobs around just hypothetically because <laughs> yeah. that is the case yeah, how yeah. much how much sort of energy in terms of wattage would I be wasting compared it, to be wearing like a little snug cask yeah, bambino it, or something yeah so cask you know like the short tail helmets are always going to work for people better that can hold that uh, you know like they, they can hold not a good head position you know that they, they move around a lot more but helmets in general it, it could be crazy you know because anywhere between anywhere between up to like you know like 20 watts if you're not wearing a uh, a helmet and you know over a you know over an Ironman distance then well that's some that, that's a lot of time you know yeah. I'd say for for most age groupers that I've seen and to the races that I've been I love it because I'm thinking wow you know you know we could shave off you know like 70.3 times you know there's like 40 or 50 watts I'm thinking wow there's anywhere between 5 and 10 minutes for most of these athletes over an, an Ironman distance it's probably, you know, it's crazy. Yeah, you know? and I'm sure people are sitting here now, thinking, "Man, yeah, what, what? Yeah, that's crazy. There's no way you're going to save that speed." But when I wanted to be national champion, I needed to find like, uh, you know, I was at the top of the sport. You know, I was finishing like second and third. I needed to find uh, it was yeah, 65 watts for 10 miles and 45 watts for for 25. And, you know, I found those and it wasn't through just, you know, getting more power on the bike. It's impossible to find that amount of power. Uh, it was through optimising aerodynamics uh, and pacing. And that's what going fast is all about. It's optimising speed, power and aerodynamics. And it's just assessing what you can do and the budget that you've got, if that makes sense. Yeah, but yeah, totally. I would just say for a lot of uh, you know, like a lot of age groupers listening to this, that you know, it's training in front of the mirror, understanding what your body can do, changing. You know, look at you look at your body shape. What happens if you move your arms and uh, your head, and you can see it. Uh, and that's then it's understanding what your body can do. But then, what we do then, say if we you know we're doing a bike fit, yeah, we look at what they can do. But then we have to understand, you, you know, you're never going to hold that in for, you know, an entire Ironman. Nobody ever will. You, you probably sort of told it for the for, for ten miles initially, but you've got to then implement drills in training to get that strength there. That's going to make you go faster, and that's what, you know, for most people that just start off with that bike fit, and you're going to start finding gains automatically. You know. If you, there's loads of people doing this, but you, you, no one's gonna get get you in a position on the bike, and then you walk out of that shop. You, you make a bit of a gain, but then you've got to understand, you know, what what you've got to do to make the improvement. It's the same as going to the winter on the track, really. That initially you 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 know you'll do like this run, but that's just like for a short duration. What you need to come away, you know, you should always ask the question. So how do I get to hold this? for an entire, yeah, not for an entire race, but you make yourself stronger in that position. Yeah. It will come. It's just like, you know, it's even like going out and doing an easy ride, then ultimately if you're giving a lot away from aerodynamics, you know, you've seen like the athletes that we coach and uh, it's like you're, not, you're never going to copy that because of what you can do on the bike to what they can do initially. It's just going to be so different different but you should be analyzing and thinking about you know it's like every training session sometimes yes you have got to run switch the mind off but even if it's an easy ride you can improve yeah you, 
yeah, your, uh, your your body shape and finding free speed. That's all we want to do. That a lot of the time, you know, Lucy's probably a diff- Lucy Child is probably a different example. You know, she's out to swim by herself, so she's got to ride a race like a time trialist. You know, to and you know we wanted to put time into people so that, that then she can then run. Uh, you know, she can run. Uh, off the bike but people are like trying to chase her down but for a lot of the guys like uh matt hansen will clark they're good examples that i'm trying to just conserve them energy so on the bike so then they're unbelievable runners that then they they conserve energy and then they're able to unleash this this run that we, we know that they're you know in, they're, they're capable of doing but, yeah that was what was amazing, like kind of seeing Tim Don last year. You know, it was phenomenal that just seeing what he was able to do on the bike, and then he, he was still able to unleash it on the run. But he's quite a unique athlete in that respect. <laughs> it was such a shame, wasn't it, that he didn't get a chance to show everybody on the biggest stage. He had that amazing race in Brazil where he ran. I think he ran was it a two thirty nine or two forty at Brazil after riding something crazy in the low four hours. Yeah, like Tim's probably one of the, you know, he is probably the best example of, he just took this all on board, you know, I was, he took a big risk, you know, being, you know, coming and being coached by me, but I was, you know, I gave him the reasons and he, he really understood like how important this, this aerodynamics were. And I was always saying to him that you're not, ne- because we all knew what he was capable of running. You know, the guys ran like 20, sub, sub 30 minutes for like 10K. I was, and I think initially he thought that he was going to get that from running, but I was like, man, if you get stronger on the bike, then you're going to run these times and, and it, you know, giving him the reasons why. And he, yeah, he really took it on board. But obviously, yeah, Kona was, yeah, he gets to me now, you know, just thinking about it. It's like that Halo video. It's yeah. phenomenal. I found it quite hard because it was always like, almost like reliving it again. Yeah. And, the relationship I've got with Tim is just so special that, you know, it's, yeah, uh, going into Kona, there's no doubt, uh, you know, that he was in the form of his life. He was in better shape than he was in Brazil. You know, I'm talking, you know, I was out there training with him in Boulder and obviously it's attitude and I'd only been there for, you know, about that for two weeks. But I remember I was laughing to myself. We were doing these intervals of a climb, you know, they were like really high, ending falls and coming to that final block and he was just leaving me and it's giving me goose pimples now <laughs> <laughs> and he just yeah he just like left me and i thought man you're in the shape of your life this is it and then obviously yeah i was out in florida at the time i was just on like a family holiday and i got this call from julie she's a really he's like i think i'm like five missed calls and uh, I was like, that doesn't, that's not good. Yeah. And he pick up the phone, and yeah, it was, it was devastating, and it still is. But you know, Tim is just like mentally, he's so strong that I do feel that you know he, he, he'd ready. You know, he's going to be racing uh, Costa Rica next week, and let's see what he can do. You know, I'm excited. I mean, he's nervous, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it really is like a. A, a no lose situation for him because he's somehow come back from what shouldn't just have been a career ending injury. It should, it, well, it could almost have been a life ending injury. And the fact that he's racing again within a year at the highest, it's just unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah. I think the thing is, Tim just loves the sport. Do you know yeah. what I mean? He really loves, he loves the whole process. He loves the training. He loves to try and find every game possible. Do you know what I mean? Is uh, and it. I just don't feel. I think what's what what's driving him. I just know he knows in the back of his head that that, that he's not had that ultimate race. You know, he's still he's had loads of good races, but in Ironman, he knows that he's still got. He just wants to have that uber performance, and we would have seen that in Kona. You know, people might say, "Oh, yeah, well," but. He w- you would have seen, you know, that he was ready for that race. It would have been amazing. But, you know, now the process is let's get back there. Let's try and, you know, let's, let's see what Tim can do. And ultimately, you know, hopefully over the course of the next, you know, maybe this year, if not next, we even 
I know uh, Tim's like obviously he's in the back end of his career. You know, he's going to be forty-two uh, next year, but I, he's looked after his body and mentally that he's still switched on. And that's the most important part for, for Tim is like his head's still there, and that's what will keep him going. It's when you get to that point and he, you get complacent uh, that you know that going that deep that you, you lose that. You know, like when you've got to do like a crazy interval and you might give it like I don't know, we might be saying doing this at 110 percent of you know like your, your threshold, but you go 120 and it's like oh, I'm going to do. He set me six, but I might do seven. Do you know, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's when you get complacent, you're like, oh, I'm only going to do four. I'm not, oh, I missed that session. Or you know that you've reached that pinnacle. I, you know, it's what kind of where I was in cycling. I reached that pinnacle. And I remember saying to myself one day, I just like won a national championship. And I was like, I've won it by like four minutes. I was like, oh, the, I see it. It used to beat me now. And I remember that. It's the worst thing I ever did. And uh, I rode you know, it was like National 25, like four months later when I got beat by somebody I'd never even heard of. But it was just like mentally I'd, I'd let go and I knew yeah. that it was the, the time to exit at the, at the top. Yeah. So, yeah. so let me ask about Lucy. Obviously, she had that amazing breakthrough performance at Kona last year where we all knew she was going to swim really well. What we didn't know was she was going to ride on the front of the race until about mile 90 and look incredibly comfortable there as well and then she was going to run really strong off the bike as well so i'm sure that came as no surprise to you but it came as a surprise to probably the majority of the the triathletes around the world watching how do you see her progressing over the next year oh lucy's just like phenomenal you know she's just so motivated and you know she's only young she's 24 but she's just got you know like the training she's done in the pool it has set her up long long term you know def, you know like the hours and hours of endless swimming like if you can do that you can do anything but yeah working with lucy it was actually the day after kona that i again like i, I was quite really funny because i was taking pictures i, I kind of I'd, 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 I'd seen lucy progress and i was hoping like one day that you know maybe you know she'd reach out and just say uh would you would you would you consider coaching me? Because always Reese had always kept in contact with me, just random ladies sending me asking me how I was, and yeah. you know he followed me and uh, try, and I just got this message: Would you consider working with myself and Lucy? And I was like, Well, yeah, yeah. Well, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. let's let's just see if we can work together. You know, I never say to anybody yes just because of who they are. You know, they have to, you know, I, I need to know that I can work with them. I'd never, you know, I'd never spoke to Lucy. I'd only ever messaged Reese. And I said, yeah, you know, I'm in, I was in Florida. I said, well, when I get back, why don't you uh, come over and meet me and we'll see if we can, yeah, we can hit this off. And obviously I met them and I was like, wow, there's just so many areas that you, you know, both of you can make improvements. And uh, yeah, so it started in, yeah about two weeks after Kona and it just progressed from there but they like Lucy is just so driven it's unbelievable uh like her mental strength yeah is is phenomenal that's what will take her you know she she will win Kona you know I'm going to make sure that she does I'll I'll, <laughs> I'll do everything I can in my power to make sure that she, she's capable of winning Kona but she, you know uh I don't, you know, she, she, it's just that motivation, like, she never complains, uh, she just gets on with it, and that's, for me, is, yeah, it's just, it's, it's really rewarding in, in itself, and it's just working with her and Reese that, and getting that synergy that, that makes it work, and, yeah, and she's got a good team around her, I mean, that's the most how much faster is she going to be on the bike this year? I know she's racing, as as we discuss here, we're a couple of weeks out from Rote, Challenge Challenge Roth or Challenge, uh, Challenge Rote, as the Germans would say. And I'm not sure this interview will go out before then. So we might have our answer by the time this goes out. But how how fast do you think she's going to go at Challenge well, Roth? Uh, overall time or well both go on give give us some ideas uh, what you think i don't i don't want to yeah i don't want to say but <laughs> on the spot it's gonna be fast, there's no doubt about it do you know what i mean in terms of when we yeah she's gonna you know she's never done this race so 
but can she break the world record? Maybe not. Yeah, I don't know. You know, uh, it could be close. Maybe wow. not this year, but... As fast as it, that, you think, huh? Yeah, it, it, in time. I'm not saying that's going to happen here, but I do think that, you know, with how Lucy is and the improvements that she's making, you know, we've seen that, you know, like two weeks ago. Uh, uh, you know, Kim Morrison, you know, biking at the speed that she, she did. Uh, you know, challenging her. You know, but it's not about, you know, we're always predicting things. And she was in a, you know, she was a minute of the prediction that I gave. So she's going to be, she's going to be phenomenal. Can she take on Daniela Reed? Yeah, I believe that she she can do in the next, you know, if it's this year, if not next, you know. But she's, she's all, you know, she's prepared to take some risks. And that's what, what this whole process is about. You know, of course, we're getting things right at the minute, but there's times when you don't. But you know, it's like okay that we didn't do this right, but just a learning process. But uh, she's more than capable. Yeah, Roth's going to be an interesting race. You know, I'm super excited for it. You know, she's yeah. We did a nice session for it yesterday, and uh, yeah, so I got some kind words from her. But <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she. You know, it's going to be a big year. I do believe that. And. Uh, so yeah, it's exciting. It's exciting for us as Brits. We should be really proud of the athletes that we've got at world class level. You know, uh, you know, I'm so excited for Kona this year. Yeah, uh, it could be. A, you know, I'm going to try and make the trip over there as well. So, are you really? Yeah, I kind of want to understand. Like, I just want to understand what Kona's all about. Obviously, I read about it. I. Uh, I've analysed that course on my computer, goodness knows how many times. You know, I could tell everybody now how to lay the power down, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I just want to know, like, obviously there's so many factors in that race. It's just like the build-up to it, the uh, the heat, uh, just how it all comes together. What is it about? Understanding, like, the crosswinds and, you know, everyone talks about the wind and it's just understanding it all. Because that's going to, if I can understand that, and what's great about Kona, it's always, uh, you know, it's always at the same place and the same time of year, then it's just going to enhance what I'm able to do with people that go there. And it's going to make me into a better coach and it's going to make the athletes better. So I'm excited. Nice, man. That's a a good place to leave it. So listen, if people want to find out more about you, uh, what's your website and Twitter and all that good stuff? Uh, So, uh, yeah, the website is www.mattbottrellperformancecoaching.com and you can find me on Twitter and that's Bottrell Matthew. I'm on Instagram, but I'm not sure what that uh, that, that name is. (laughs) Just Google Matthew Bottrell. (laughs) Uh, And you can find us on Facebook. Uh, Yeah, if you've got any questions, yeah, just pick ping them over and we'll try and answer them great stuff man hey man listen thank you so much for uh, for chatting it's been really interesting talking to you and having you back on the show and uh, and best of luck for all your athletes for the coming year oh thanks a lot rob it's always good i always tune in so uh, yeah keep up the good work cheers buddy i'll speak to you again soon you too mate Okay, so we did it. There we go. There's this week's interview with Matt. I hope you really enjoyed that. And and I think you'll agree the passion that that guy's got for what he does just really comes through. And a quick Google will help you uh, find Matt. It's mattbottleperformancecoaching.com. And um, he's got some he's got great coaching options. He's got great bike fit options. And so if you're at the point where you're wondering where you're going to get the next increase in speed from, I can highly recommend a visit down to see Matt. All right, then, guys. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Just uh, a quick extra shout out. Thanks very much to our sponsors, PrecisionHydration.com. Now, remember, you can get yourself a free box or tube of Precision Hydration worth up to $9.99 by using the code OxygenAddict. I'm personally a massive fan of this company and of their product. They've really, really helped me out, um, especially at the moment when it's super hot here, as I'm currently recording in the UK. We're going through something of a a phenomenal heat wave. And keeping on top of my electrolytes has been really important to me to to stay healthy. I find that even going out for anything over a 30-minute run, if I don't rehydrate properly using electrolyte salts, I just feel rotten for the rest of the day and I'm constantly thirsty. Whereas just mixing in a little bit of the precision hydration into my drink really seems to help recover me back to normal quickly. And in terms of when I'm going out for long rides, I consider it as essential as wearing bike shoes. So 
really check these guys out. If you haven't taken their online sweat test, that's simple and free to do. And it'll give you a good guide as to whether you're a salty or a heavy sweater. And if you are and the data points in that direction, you can have an in-person sweat test done with them to really nail down exactly what might be going on with your body. So if you guys are taking part in a hot summer race, 70.3 or Ironman this year, keeping on top of your electrolyte intake is going to be really one of the key parts of your performance. So get over there and check it out. Remember, you can use the code OxygenAddict at the checkout. All right, everyone. Thank you very much for listening. We'll be back to business as usual with Helen and I from next week. We'll have more interesting and exciting interviews then. I think, in fact, we're going to have Andy Blow, one of the founders of Precision Hydration, we did an interview with him after his recent races down at one of the O to Low races down in the Silly Isle. So loved finding out about all about the swim run style of racing. And I'm actually considering having a little dabble in that myself next year. So if you guys are interested in possibly breaking out from triathlon and trying something a bit different, and maybe swim run is piquing your interest, this interview is going to be a must listen for you. And he's one of the one of the nicest guys out there. He's a great interview, but also he's really passionate about swim run and he's very, very good at it as well. So again, we break down tips from one of the best in the sport to help help the rest of us out, as it were. All right, then, guys, thank you very much for listening. Take it easy. I'm Coach Rob Wilby, and you'll be listening to the Oxygen Addict Triathlon Podcast. Until next week, have a great safe training and racing week, and we'll see you again soon. Cheers. See ya.